it's important I think to face up to being wrong about your diet or about exercise or whatever approach you're taking. I've just been reading Dr. Peter Atlier's Outlive, um, which is an interesting book, um, and he is of the opinion that um, he was a he was an avid supporter of the keto and fasting, both the things I'm interested in, and uh, he is now um, less avidly supporting of them, and talks about diet in a generalised term of caloric restriction, uh, timing restriction, and um, dietary restriction, so which foods you eat, um, and says that there are downsides to fasting, of course, um, claims that there are loss of muscle mass, which I'm interested in, but I need to really read up about, um, and also that keto is hard to stick to, which it is, um, and not necessarily for everyone, which is true. I've also started reading a book called Diet Cults, um, I've forgotten the name of the author I'm afraid, I'll zip it up on the screen, here it is, um, and it's a more generalised discussion of uh, one diet philosophies um, and mudslinging people claiming that their diet works and no others don't do that kind of thing, and it's so far not not the most illuminating read actually, but it does make a point that we do tend to stick in one tribe and not look at others, um, come hell or high water. So um, you can be wrong, it's important to allow yourself to be wrong. So yeah, it's quite tricky. Uh, admitting that you might be wrong at something and um, I think it's healthy to look at different opinions. Um, uh, one of the great points that the Atlia book makes is that um, there are lots of different approaches um, but that everyone responds to them differently and patients respond to them differently lost them about adherence. He says that weightlifters tend to use caloric restriction and that works for them. Uh, and that's okay because they don't need to lose that much weight. They shave a few pounds, they carry on. Um, and that's because they can adhere to that thing. They're used to really stringently following their numbers and doing everything they need to do to keep that very muscly shape. Um, so that works for them, they can adhere to it, other people can't. Um, and that uh, keto, for example, giving up of carbohydrates and refined carbohydrates, um, that can be very challenging for some people. And it challenges not only our um, palate, what we're used to eating, our system, what our microbes can handle, but also um, it challenges your way of life. Um, and I think if you can't stick to a way of life, then it's not for you, and that's all right. So uh, it's important to um, keep calm under the circumstances, not think that that's the only thing that will do it and not um, not make it stop your efforts. I think when I paused and started doing all this reading, um, I it's because I didn't want to bounce back and I still don't want to bounce back. And I think that's really important um, for me. Whatever approach I choose, I've got to feel like I can sustain it and that I'm on the right path and that um, afterwards the won't come the weight won't come streaming back on again. Now I think I don't know if you can tell from my video, but every time I do these videos I look at my face and the size of it, 
whether it's thinned down. I think it has. I have lost a bit of weight. My uh, belt is looser. My clothes are generally getting quite baggy. So the approach I'm working and doing is working for what I want it to do. It's important to wait. note that what I'm not wanting to do is lose weight. What I want to do is lose adipose tissue, lose fat. And I think if you are obese, it's always very important to bear in mind that that's what you're trying to do. You're not trying to reach towards a number. You're not trying to uh, um, look like your favourite starlet. You're trying to lose some of the uh, adipose tissue, especially around your organs, the visceral fat, uh, to keep you out of danger. Um, yeah, so I don't know whether the intermittent fasting is the right approach yet. I am pretty enthusiastic about it. I think it's given me a lot of insight and interest and I feel it's sustainable sometimes in the morning when I'm a bit hungry. Um, I feel that maybe I'm being a bit dogmatic about it, but I don't really miss, um, don't miss breakfast. I don't miss ultra processed foods in the slightest. Uh, Christmas was really great this year because there were chocolates and things around, but um, I haven't really felt tempted at all to eat them. I've got plenty of other goodies to eat. Uh, homemade mince pies, homemade Christmas cakes and puddings, um, lots of fruit and nuts, and lots of cheese. I love cheese. Um, so uh, that'd be interesting. Uh, the other thing that uh, Peter says is that um, fasting 16 hours isn't necessarily helpful. A lot of people don't lose weight on it. Um, and people can go on OMAD, just one meal a day, and challenge themselves to eat as much as they can on that one meal, and as a result, put on weight. Uh, which is very interesting. Uh, I still think that uh, we've got to take this onus away from us and our input as the thing that causes weight gain. I don't think cause being cause gaining weight I don't think that is a choice it stems from our biology and we don't really have an option when it comes to that um, but choosing the right foods and being mindful about it I think that can probably help us avoid weight gain uh, as it goes to weight loss um, I have to do it somehow. Um, I don't think just changing my diet to a healthy one and then getting some exercise is going to necessarily help me lose weight. I'm not in a rush to lose weight. So trying different approaches out, see what's sustainable, see what works for me and trying to keep my mind fully open as to the possibility that it might not be the most healthiest thing to do. Um, I'm going to read up more about this muscle mass thing with intermittent fasting. I think, personally, that I don't think it will matter that much um, because it'll be, if I do carry on fasting, it'll be a means to lose weight and it'll be a means to maintain it when I get there um, and I think keep a good hormonal balance, which is the, the biggest benefit of fasting. Um, while at the same time, I can then reintroduce a, a useful amount of calories, just some amount of food into my diet so that I'm not letting my body down, so that I've got enough protein to fuel my muscles and to build them and enough sugar, I guess, enough uh, carbohydrate in order to fuel exercise when I am a bit thinner 
I'm more able to exercise, but to keep an eye on it as well. So first thing I think in any of these diets, uh, fads, whatever we want to call them, uh, should be um, viewed with some caution, uh, but also not taken for granted. I think being too dogmatic about anything is going to end up with you in a hole somewhere and having to dig yourself out. Anyway, that's my thoughts. What a mess our diet system is. What a mess nutritional research is. Um, cheery thoughts for a Boxing Day. I'm not going to say Merry Christmas because it's July. <laughs> Probably. Have a lovely summer. Bye.